Hello, and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. I'm your host, Christy. I come to you from the Denver area of Colorado, where I live with my husband, Ron, our two daughters, Tatum and Delaney, our tuxedo kitty, Lilu, and our Padango puppy, Sophie. Welcome. This is a knitting podcast. I'm going to talk about the things that I am knitting, and will be knitting, and have knit. And that is all that it is going to contain. So let's go ahead and get into it. I have one F.O., it is a pair of shorty socks. These I knit for Delaney. If you recall, this was um, originally supposed to be a Christmas colorway, but I didn't feel like it gave very many Christmas vibes. I felt more like it was watermelon and summer. So I went ahead and changed my plan and made these into shorty socks for Delaney for this summer. The yarn is White Birch Fiber Arts in the Le Grinch Noel colorway and uh, I think they turned out really cute. Uh, this was dyed with uh, two matching 50 gram skeins. I used one of them for these socks so I have a whole other half skein that I can use for something in the future. Um, you might notice they don't match. Uh, that was on purpose. I actually rewound the yarn going the other way so the stripes actually are opposite, um, and yeah, I did these toe up with a Turkish toe cast on. I did a true afterthought heel, and then just I didn't do any ribbing. I just did a Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off and let it roll um, with its normal stockinette roll, and those are done. And that is all that I have finished so far. But I do have a couple of whips. Um, the other pair of socks that I have been working on, I don't know that I've added very much, um, maybe just a couple of rows, but here they are. This is Nidalee Thing's Vesper Sock in the Holiday Celebrate colorway. Um, I do really love her stripes, her, just like the color combination she puts together. So um, now that the uh, Grinch socks are done, um, I can focus my sock knitting on these. We do have some plans to have dinner with some friends tonight, so I will probably be knitting on this over there because um, I don't have to look at socks when I knit them. Uh, and the other things that I am knitting, I do have to pay attention to. Speaking of those, let's get into them. I have two more whips. One is my... <clears throat> dark water sweater. When I showed it to you last time, I just started knitting on the first sleeve and I have finished that first sleeve. I followed the pattern pretty much exactly for the sleeve, except for when it came to the cuff. Um, originally it had you just do one by one ribbing for two or three inches. I decided to go ahead because this, I don't like the look of loose ribbing uh, on a loose gauge and the sweater is kind of on a, on a slightly loose gauge. When you get to ribbing, it just, it just looks sloppy to me. So I went ahead and knit twice as much as the pattern called for and then I folded it in and tacked it down on uh, knitting uh, the the front and the back together and then casting off as I went. So it gives the the cuff, I, I think, a little bit more definition. It doesn't show the, the loose gauge quite as badly. And um, it's basically the same thing that I did for the neck, only, only, you know, more so. And with the neck, I was starting, whereas with the sleeve, I was, you know, ending <laughs> the knitting. So I can kind of, I'm trying to get, get out of the way, get out of the way. Oh, there's a big old long one. So just to kind of give you an idea of how that looks, I do think it just gives it a little bit more of a finished, finished look. Um, and, and yeah, so that is one sleeve. Completely done. The uh, the left sleeve, actually. Right? Yeah. Left sleeve's done. 
right sleeve I have finished the decreases and now I just need to knit straight for another four or, five, four or so inches. Let me double check that. Yeah, about that much. Still needs to go on the right sleeve, um, but it does go fast. And, and then I will finally finish the body. I opted to knit the sleeves first because, you know, often when you finish it, when you have finished the body of a sweater, you just want it to be done. You don't want to have to knit the sleeves after. And, and I know that that is my tendency. So I figured if I get the sleeves, knock them out, then, um, then I will have them done. And when I finish the body, the whole sweater will be done. Um, plus I wanted to knit the sleeves out of the same skein. I used, uh, one skein for the sleeves. And I do see, I, I know, I know that there is a difference here. I, it doesn't bother me. Um, I did not want to alternate skeins for the sleeves. Um, I am doing that with, with my, uh, with my Fargo sweater. Um, and that one's not bothering me, but for some reason, this one, I didn't want to do that. And I am okay with that slight difference here. Um, I think that it will be fine, um, when the whole sweater is done. And if nothing else, both sleeves will match because I am using the ske same skein for both sleeves. And I will have some leftover of this when I finish the second sleeve and I will incorporate that into the body with alternating skeins. Um, I have this much left of the three skeins that I wound. I do have one more skein um, if I find that I need it when I get to the end of the body. I will not be using the navy for the ribbing on the body um, because I don't like the way that looks with a sweater having the, the ribbing band a different color. I think it kind of puts and it puts attention on maybe some spots you don't really want attention on like your mid section. So, um, so while I did do it on the cuffs, I will not be doing it on the, um, hem of the sweater. Um, so yeah, so it's going, it's still, you know, a fairly slow process. Uh, well, I, you know what? I, I shouldn't say that it's not, but the sleeves went pretty fast. Um, they, are, are, you know, they don't take a whole lot of, of attention. Um, the decreasing was simple, you know, just, just a single decrease every so often. And uh, that was easy to follow. Um, and so while watching TV, I have been doing that. Um, so, and then once the, once the sleeves are done, the body should go pretty fast. There is no shaping to this body. So, um, it'll just be, straight down for however many inches and then the ribbing and then it will be done. Now, again, I am knitting this uh, two sizes smaller than I am currently. So um, this is meant to be worn. Well, obviously, because we're coming into summer now, this is not something that I'm going to be wearing anytime soon, but I did uh, want to get it done. It has been a blast to knit on. I've really, really enjoyed it. So it's working out well. I'm very pleased with it. There is something to be said about knitting something large in colors that you really like. It does make it go faster when it's, when the yarn is a color or a base that you really enjoy. It makes, the, it makes the knitting that much more enjoyable. I think the, the dog is acting up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have one more whip. This one you guys haven't seen in a long time. This one I started last August. In fact, I took it with us to um, Kansas when we went last, must have been around then, maybe September, somewhere around then. And, uh, and I took advantage of the five hour drive uh, to and from to try to get uh, a lot of this done because it's not the most exciting knit, um, but it is a sweater top, or uh, I'm sorry, it's a summer top. And I knew that I would get a lot of use out of the garment. 
even if I didn't really enjoy the knitting. The pattern is Breezy Summer Tea. And honestly, there are only two people that have projects for this, um, this top in Ravelry. I am one and one of my knitting friends, the one who, um, who I saw it from, um, it, uh, were the only ones. So, um, if you're looking for something that hasn't been knit by everybody, this might be an option. Um, so it's meant to be knit out of a DK yarn. Um, it's like, it suggests that Bergen, Bergere de France Ecoton, um, but any lightweight DK that has a bit of a drape um, is recommended. Uh, I picked Fibra Natura Unity Beyond, which is 36% wool, 28% cotton, 18% linen, and 18% bamboo. It is very lightweight, uh, kind of boucle, boucle y and, uh, and I just really liked the colors. This was very um, reasonably priced at $11 a skein at Colorful Yarns, my um, local yarn shop. And I think I bought four skeins with which to do this top. So, you know, $45 for a, for a knit sweater or knit top, not a sweater. The problem is with the knitting of it is that you can see it's a very simple lace pattern. It is literally just, you know, a decrease in a yarn over and a decrease in a yarn over and a decrease in a yarn over. Um, so it, it is kind of dull <laughs> to knit, but, um, but I have been working on it. Um, when you guys saw it last, I was right about to here, uh, which was about seven inches. Um, I have in just the past couple of days, been really struggling to try to get more of it done and I have added that much. I now have about 12 inches. Um, and, and I think I have to go to 16. So about four more inches to go and then I can start doing um, the armhole shaping. This is a bottom up top. So, um, so yeah, just about four more inches. Um, hopefully I can get that done this weekend and then I can start finishing up the shaping. I know once I get to the armhole shaping, it'll be a little bit more enjoyable because there'll be something else going on, but it's just the same thing over and over and over again. And because it is so simple, you don't really have to pay a lot of attention to it, but because you're doing, um, decreases and well, you're doing yarn overs and knit two togethers because you're doing that. You have to kind of look a little bit, especially because of the the, the characteristic of, of this yarn, it just, it's, it, it has, it's a little thick and thin, a little boucle type. And, um, and it's easy to, to kind of not get the whole thing. So, well, you don't have to pay close attention to it. You do have to pay some attention to it. So it's not, it's not like knitting on, um, the dark water where it's just stockinette around and around and around and around and around and around again. Um, yeah. So anyway, I am making progress. I do like the way it looks. I really like the colors. I think I will get a lot of wear out of it. It is meant to be oversized. So, um, so I'll be able to wear it this summer and I should be able to continue to wear it. Um, because, uh, until, it, you know, oversized is oversized, right? So, yeah. So that is the, the progress on that. I am really trying to get this done soon. Now is the time to wear it. I mean, now is, is the perfect weather for this. And, um, and yeah, I could really get a lot of wear out of this because it is mostly cotton and let's see, it's just, it's got 36% wool, but the rest of it is soft or is, um, summer, uh, fibers, you know, cotton, linen, and bamboo, good summer fibers. So, um, the 36% wool shouldn't make it too warm. Plus it's very airy with all of the, you know, eyelets and whatnot. So it should be something that I should be able to get a lot of wear out for the summer if I can get it done. <laughs> oh, and I will say I am in the second skein right now. I have 
Oh, uh, well, I don't know. Are there, how many grams are these? These are... These are 100 grams. I probably have maybe 20 grams left. Um, so I so I could totally do this with three skeins. Or, um, yeah, possibly with three skeins. Maybe just breaking into the fourth. I am making the, the medium size here. So um, that one there. So it's meant to, to be 52 inches round. Um, and I did that because I didn't want it to have too much positive ease when I when I started it last year um, and my friend that is making it or that has already made it said that she started with the size that was appropriate for her size and it ended up being super huge and she had to rip it out and start smaller so I followed her um, advice and kind of cut it down a little bit and that is all that I have on the needles um, so not a whole lot, but that's okay because I'm making my way, making my way downtown. Do, do, do. Um, I do have some plans figured out the next sweater I'm going to cast on. Um, I was watching, uh, the grocery girls earlier today. Um, I just watched part of their hundredth episode and, uh, they were showing off their love notes, which is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. And I remembered that I was excited about knitting that. Um, and so I went and I bought special yarn for it and I thought, you know what, that would be a good one to knit right now. So, um, I am going to go ahead and start that one as soon as one of these other two sweaters are done all into sweaters right now, which is actually really nice because it's been a long time since I've been in sweater mode. And so I am going to knit that out of, uh, this, I have two skeins of this. Uh, this is Hugh Loco, uh, her Phyllis sock in outer space love. It's a nice gray, uh, with purple, blue, and like neon yellow, green speckles. And I am pairing that with this mohair. This is Rowan Kid Silk Haze. Uh, the colorway number is... Zero, zero, 00684. It's just a really pretty yellow. I love bright, happy colors. You might have noticed that about me. Um, and so... I really like the idea of pairing this gray with this yellow um, and getting a really pretty love note out of it. So I will be um, winding these up pretty soon and getting that started. I'm excited about it. Um, I got five skeins of the Kid Silk Haze. Um, I think I'm going to go with the midriff. I do like the way that that looks. Um, and when I finished my my Camaro. I really like the way that, that, that the midriff style on that. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and make this one a midriff, midriff as well. Then I've got, uh, just a couple of, um, new acquisitions to talk about. Um, this was the nerd string skein that I had mentioned was coming. The colorway is, uh, blue slash green slash gray eyes, I believe. Well, it's not written on the, on the tag. That is interesting. So yeah, I think it's going to go well. With all the other colors that I have for that sweater. So yeah, now that I have the other skein, I can, um, start making plans to knit that. Um, I did order some other things from her though. She has t-shirts, um, for only $10. They're really lightweight, so they're not gonna, you know, last forever, but they're perfect for the summer. Um, so I got this one. This is just her, uh, nerd, uh, nerd string logo in a Colorado flag, um, a knitted Colorado flag. So she's a Colorado based dyer. She's actually 
only about 20 minutes away from me. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was keen on that and, and I really like it. I like that it's a V-neck. Um, and then she, and, oh, and these are only $10, which is a great price. And then she also has really reasonably priced bags. So I got this one that says, um, cheap yarn makes me cry, which is pretty appropriate for me. Um, and it's just, a, it's just like a tote, but I am using it to hold my, um, breezy summer sweater, summer tea. And I really just like it. And this was also really reasonably priced, like maybe $12. So I do recommend, um, her if you are looking for stuff <laughs> and you want to support a uh, Colorado indie dyer. Uh, the other thing that I purchased that recently came is my um, Christmas yarn from Wooly Elephant. I got, they had a, um, it was a mini sock set. So it's three 20 gram skeins and um, you can put it together to do whatever. I am going to make it into one of my Christmas socks. The colorway is merry and bright and I just think it's beautiful. This speckled one is just singing to me. I think it's gorgeous. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to do it. Um, part of me wants to thinks that stripes would be beautiful, but I don't don't really want to have to fiddle with it too much. With stripes, you have a lot of ends, and then you have. Um, I might try helical. That would probably work pretty good. That would make like micro stripes. I'm not entirely sure. Um, if you guys have any ideas, please put them down below. Part of me is like, well, maybe I can just make it out of these two and save this one because it's just so pretty. I would, I would totally knit a whole, like I would love a whole skein of this one. This is just gorgeous. Just here, you guys can see, look at how beautiful that is. I get, I want like a whole hundred gram skein of this colorway. It is so gorgeous. And, uh, again, this is a woolly elephant, which is a, that's upside down, a woolly elephant, which is a mother daughter team in the UK. And they're awesome. I like them a lot. Uh, lastly, I got my prize for finishing the Lolo did it knit along, uh, the hippo for the holidays knit along. I had, uh, I'd honestly forgotten about it. <laughs> um, but if you, if you knit the 12, uh, 12 items, one for each month of the year and tagged it properly on Instagram, then you were, uh, eligible for a prize. Last year, I, in 2018, I, I was eligible for the prize too. And it was a skein of of sock yarn um, in the special Hippo for the Holidays 2018 colorway, um, and I got that. And so when it uh, was time to to do the the prize for this one, I asked if it was going to be a different uh, colorway, um, and if I could get it in a heavier weight yarn because I had knit it. In, you know, I, in 2019, I knit them all hats, so I wanted to get uh, another um, worsted or DK weight yarn that I could knit my my prize in a hat. So um, they did do a uh, a new colorway, and I was able to get it in worsted. This is Hippo for the Holidays 2019. Pretty speckle. Um, of course, you know, uh, Lolo did its hippos are... Um, our gray base with different color speckles on, depending on the holiday. She does have a new one for this month. Um, it is Hippo for Bubble Bath, which is kind of cool. Um, I guess when you're in quarantine, that's that's a kind of holiday, right? <laughs> um, but it also came with all kinds of other goodies. It came with a uh, Lolo Did It Hippo for the Holidays bag. Her sister makes these bags, and I wanted one forever but I haven't been able to get my hands on one. And now I have one. And this is actually um, a new size that I guess maybe they're debuting. This is a sock size bag. The other ones are a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah, really, really excited about this. It's got um, polka dots on the inside. 
And it also came with a, a mini. This is in the low original base. Um, and the colorway is River Babylon. Really pretty. I'll use this probably for heels and toes. It came with some um, eye, uh, not eyeball, um, light bulb stitch markers. It came with a Lolo did it um, measuring tape. Some Eucalyn. A Lolo did it enamel pin. And some Tuft Woolen's lip balm. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, really excited about what all came in this package. This was a lot more involved than the first year, so that was really awesome. And yeah, that's it. Um, I want to thank everybody for all the kind things that you said about my mom's quilt. Uh, the wall hanging quilt that she made me that I showed you guys last time. I do have other quilts that mom has made for me. And um, if you guys are interested, then maybe I'll take some pictures because they're like bedspreads and, and stuff like that. Uh, maybe take some pictures and, uh, and show them to you so you can see the kind of cool things that my mom makes. Um, because my family is is very crafty. I mean... Yeah, my aunt is a master seamstress. She makes all these, uh, you know, these knitting bags. She made my wedding dress. Um, my uncle is uh, kind of a jack of all trades. He can make all kinds of things. Um, he uh, he's the type type of person that I have over, and I'm like, I'm thinking about doing this with the house, and he helps me make it happen, which is kind of awesome. So, um, so yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and um, I'll talk to you later. Bye.